Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. This permadeath journey is going to be following a young elf ranger. Not just any ranger, but a ranger obsessed with the beasts of this world. Some would call him a beast hunter perhaps, but he's also just incredibly curious about what lies below. So on this journey we're going to be taking this ranger through the depths of goblin caves, which is actually quite a shortcut through the mountains, to finally arrive at ruins. There has been rumors amongst the elves that hidden in these sacred ruins is a beast of odd structure and length, but not a serpent of any kind. So this elf set on a journey to find this, and we're going to see if we can get there using a class that I very rarely use. And this is, yes, this is pre-patch, which means rogues will be ever abundant, and turn this into almost a horror game in ways that I never really paid attention to before. Ranger is an entirely different playstyle, one that I am not familiar with, having pretty much not touched it since Playtest 3, when it was incredibly broken, with super crazy longbow damage, and incredibly strong spear damage. And you're probably sitting there thinking, well, that really hasn't changed much, and you're right. Just quickly touching on the perks, I did take the one that makes draw speed a little bit faster. I'm always impressed with how much agility you have on Ranger. Something I pretty much always forget about, considering I'm using the elf skin as well, which bumps it up a little bit more. But you noticed my agility is super high, meaning if I do find a spear, I can probably swing that thing almost as fast as a fighter using Adrenaline Rush. It's pretty absurd, once you get some agility stacked on the ranger class, you swing and switch weapons incredibly quickly. Something I overlook all the time. Now I am using a crutch here, I'm taking field ration, simply because I know I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. However, I see a lot of value in penetrating shot in combination with quick shot. But for my run, and to keep this ranger alive as we try to make our way to ruins, we're going to be using field ration. And quite early on, we have a pretty nice spawn, very nice setup. This is the pretty much go-to ranger area if you're in goblin caves. You have this whole zone, long distances, single alleyways that you can trap easily. It's really not a horrible place to start, as I learned this class once again. See a little rogue dancing around beneath us? I think I tagged him with an arrow. It's incredibly hard to tell at this range. Even these young elf eyes struggle in this darkness. This darkness is much more suited to our lesser known and often evil cousins, you could say, the Dark Elves. They are a hidden race amongst this land that few talk or know about, as they are so well hidden throughout this realm. This rogue's doing everything he can to become well hidden, however, that board saves him from a likely arrow to the knee. He becomes a little frustrated with what we've been doing, he starts to make his way in our direction, and this type of shot is so, so difficult. Double jumping, juking, high movement speed rogue isn't easy to get used to, and projectile speeds on any ranged weapon in Dark and Darker means you have to do a lot of leading and guessing at a player's movement. Very rare you get to aim directly on them and expect it to hit. If you're facing a good player or someone that's highly mobile, you have to be very smart with your arrow placement. Less so in the recurve. Recurve, I'd say recurve is like the perfect happy medium of fire rate, and damage. We're going to put it to test here. He's doing everything he can to juke and dodge. We're aiming for the center of his body, hoping they land. And perfectly, five hits, we get a kill. And as the legend says, an arrow to the knee will not stop an adventurer, but five arrows to the chest just might. Now, that being said, you probably should be focusing headshot damage against any other targets. Barbarian or fighter is just going to have such a high HP pool, you might not get away with chest damage. Luckily, this rogue and most rogues, running at you in a straight line like that, you have enough damage even with the starter bow to deal with them. If you're dealing with a plate fighter or a barbarian, you need to delete a serious amount of HP quickly. This young elf is not well trained in fighting other people and beings of this world. Monsters and beasts are one thing, but enraged loot hunters is another. Something he was not entirely aware of as he set on this journey. Any reports of the past have always mentioned 
goblins being in trouble as they try to increase their treasure hoard sizes. But the random adventurers that have been entering into these dungeons has been quite surprising. Many of them wielding skills and abilities that he's never quite seen before. Now, as we sneak around the outside of this map, we're going to do as much looting as we can. We get a super lucky zone. It is pushing right in our direction. We get a nice little agility bump here again with these nice loose trousers. It's kind of an odd one. It's very rare you get a zone on this side. And if I was mining right now, it would be like a dream come true. We get all these nodes up top, as many of the nodes as I could down below. And then quite often a portal spawns on that lower level. We did place a trap here earlier, so we need to be cautious. This is a pretty common route to get up into this room, as it's... It's a corner I prefer playing from. We get an early portal, and knowing... Literally 50 gold could mean a huge upgrade on our weaponry. We're gonna jump down and start dealing with some of these mobs. So we can get out of here a little quicker. The first survival run is the most important, as you can then afford meds. Even just a white weapon over your base weapon. It's a huge damage increase. And if we're lucky with the merchant or goblin merchant, we could find a very, very nice recurve bow. Something this elf prefers using over a longbow. Longbow is a more traditional human weapon, and this elf is all about his fast-firing recurve. We hear a guy up above, and we're not going to mess around. We've got a rogue surround and barbarians. As we can see, there's a rogue here, and a barbarian sitting above us. That barbarian fight would have been a difficult one. He was able to jump down, and he didn't just immediately leave. That hatchet would have been chewing through our health bar quite quickly. Funnily enough, he did end up landing on our hunting trap. So at least it wasn't a complete waste of placing it there. However, he dealt with the boa. Dealt with the boa before that trap. Could really panic him too much. Now, getting back to the lobby, we do have... We do have an okay inventory. It's not amazing, but it was something. We got our first kill. Selling all this junk. We're gonna get an okay amount of gold. Hopefully it's enough for a recurve or something along those lines. Of all the classes, Ranger has like the highest amount of stuff you could be purchasing. If you want a really successful run, you need arrows and you need traps. So this recurve bow alone is gonna set us back most of our gold. And then we can't afford traps. We're not gonna have a whole pile of arrows sitting in our inventory. I feel like it's always a struggle to balance your economy on Ranger, if you're not doing well, and if you're playing solo. In teams, I feel like you have a bit more protection, a bit more chance to survive, and an incredibly strong class. So the likelihood you are surviving is higher. Also enables your team and group to do PvE a little bit easier, as you can clear mobs from distance, do bosses, do mini bosses, the whole nine yards. Once you get that spear, it's quite a power increase on an already strong class. So we're just mulling over what our final options are. We have some meds. We don't have a lot of coins left. And that is likely going to be all we can accomplish. We're going to jump into another raid and hope we don't get shanked by a rogue. We'll see what this damage increase does before we're doing, I think, 30 or 31. And now we're doing almost 50 damage just with one bow. One bow upgrade. 20 more damage on headshot, which is excellent. It's clearing mobs way quicker. And pretty much two shots. Two shot headshot, that is. Any squishy class. Poor wizards just don't stand a chance. I need to clear these mobs super quickly, because oftentimes, and I've done it, players spawn in that outer room and rush right to this location because they know it's difficult to get out of quickly. And sure enough, there's a guy hot on our tail as he makes his way over to this door. And then we hear a player below us, likely by the Goblin Mage. Just hoping these mobs behind me don't aggro. Truly believe there's a rogue near the side of that door just waiting. Waiting for that little bit of noise, a little bit of chaos for his moment to strike. 
We need to be super cautious. Playing Ranger is not a race. It is such a different feeling. It is incredible how much I forgot. It was such a patience game. You have to be way more patient. Pick your battles. And choose when to be dealing that damage. You need to let classes come to you. And once they start doing that, as we're about to see... It can scare a lot of them off quite quickly. This rogue knew covering that ground against a recurve bow with quick shot was likely not going to be a good idea. The rogue before him didn't learn this yet, but that guy obviously got the memo. Do not mess with an elf ranger holding an angle. Just not a smart move. And this, this rogue's got me super panicked because if he left that door open, if he left that door open, he could sneak his way in slowly, jumping on us as we become distracted with a threat underneath us or beside us. So you still have to be super cautious. It is such a different play style, it's incredible. Let me hear this guy below, and we need to let's start working our way forward so we tag him in the head with an arrow. I hear him switch to his trap briefly, and then place one. And sometimes in the chaos this can be forgotten about, but pay attention to those trap placements, as it will become incredibly important. Seeing how this guy placed a hunting trap, this is a ranger duel. I feel like I just tagged him there once. And with the projectile speed, you need to almost be shooting before he peeks. Making sure this rogue doesn't sneak up behind us. We are now getting pushed by zone. Pre-fired that corner, which tagged him, which was a very nice hit, as he goes for a field ration. I did not see him cross over, which really surprised me, so it threw me off as I start slinging some arrows as fast as possible. We take one to the chest and then land in his trap, which is a huge mistake, and this could be it. Fortunately, fortunately, we didn't panic too much. There was a bit of panic, I'm not going to lie. Once I started dealing those arrows, dishing them out, and they weren't landing. You always get a little bit of fear that you're going to soon run out of arrows, and then that headshot from his longbow would have certainly crippled us. Luckily, we were brave enough to stand in the trap, eat the damage, and deal the, the killing blow. I thought he was using longbow. For whatever reason, I thought I saw longbow, but he was actually just using a recurve, which is probably why we are still, still nice and healthy, as the longbow would have hurt a lot more. Killing this guy gives us free, free wall of loot. One of the best spots in the game for looting. And you do get the rare scenario where you find rings and pendants here, which I find pretty wild. Not so lucky this time around. However, this is enough, like this alone, like this little wall of loot is sometimes a, a, it in itself enough to be solid, successful permadeath escape. I know a lot of people will farm cave troll and do all this crazy stuff and really push the limits to what each run needs to do. I prefer dueling, fighting it out in the upper levels, as I always run into some interesting engagements no matter what permadeath story I'm telling. When this elf is looking for that worm, or shall I say a serpent-like creature that the elves have heard about, if we can survive a few goblin caves, we can hopefully make it there. However, these two monsters, these two monsters that he's not too familiar with dealing with, are giving him a heck of a run. As we take a boatload of damage, trying to navigate in circles around two death beetles that, truthfully, I was not expecting to both aggro on me at the same time. Luckily, we have our, our pocket snacks, which heal us back up to full HP. It is the exact reason why I brought those along. Mistakes are abundant if you're not a tried and true veteran of each class. And that field ration is a super nice way to top up your HP. It's honestly absurd how good that it is. And even still, oftentimes, it is not the most picked skill on the Ranger class. There are other options that are extremely good as well. Lightfoot boots. I guess I'll grab them. I'm addicted to picking up lightfoot boots as they're my favorite boot, providing the highest amount of movement speed. 
Try to get through this wall quickly. Short sword is not great at that. And we aggro a skeleton champion. He shouldn't be too difficult to deal with as a ranger class. It just takes... Takes a lot of time. It burns through a lot of arrows. If we get caught up in a PvP engagement while fighting this guy, we are in for some serious trouble. We need to deal with these mobs as soon as possible. Luckily, as a ranger, like I said, you have crazy agility. With that quick draw perk on a recurve bow, you can dish out damage insanely fast. I hear footsteps beside me. Could be above. Hopefully they're above. Because this is not the situation I want to be in. Luckily, luckily Skeleton Champion gets caught. Allows us to get us a little bit of, a little bit of breathing room and space as we pop another field ration. I'm gonna make sure I'm nice and full HP, considering a guy could jump down from the upper levels at any moment. Dealing with our first real monster kill. This ranger's feeling pretty good about himself, but the loot is looking pretty terrible. Something really exciting from that. Hoping to see a longbow or a recurve bow. Hoping to really jump our damage numbers up. Here, a lot of commotion. Still a few players left. But Armored Sword is a nice upgrade over that short sword. Armored Sword, in itself, is amazing as a secondary option on Ranger. You have super high action speed. You can you can dish out some pretty solid damage when you need to to finish off a rogue. But the spear, the spear certainly trumps it. It is by far the best option on Ranger class. You get a power increase on it, like a damage increase on it, and your agility makes that thing hit so quickly. It's absurd. Finally opening up that barricade with our arming sword. I saw a guy just above us as those pots. His pots were crumbling down from the ceiling above. And I was expecting if he was a brave man, not really too worried about his his treasure or loot, he'd be barging into this room trying to do away with us. So I set that trap up just in case, just in case we need to do the typical ranger run in circles, flee, escape, let them jump in the trap and then triple shot them in the face. It is exciting, dramatic, super intense gameplay that all ranger players know and love. See a dead rogue here, base kit rogue. There's a lot of these around. Though I think that is likely about to change. And what needs to change is we need to find a blue portal and get the heck out of here. So we make our way into the upper levels Hoping that guy is gone. We need to deal with some of these some of these mobs. Fairly standard practice. It's absurd how much damage you can just sling around with a recurve bow, a green recurve bow. Chew through one goblin, quick shot another, jump over a barrel. The the potential for this class and the Gameplay of it is incredibly exciting. There's no doubt it takes a skilled player, skilled elf ranger, to master the longbow or recurve bow. We get this whole room to ourselves, which is quite a nice change. Because oftentimes, getting stuck in this inner circle as a ranger can be probably the most difficult part if you're pushing into the final circle. Heard a portal spawn below us, we need to get moving as the final portal closes exceptionally fast. As a ranger player, you kind of want to be setting things up for the final circle, and I think that was one thing. One thing I probably should have done a little better in this one. I don't really want to be getting to that portal or that circle last. It is like when you're at your weakest, pushing into other players. You want players having to sneak through your traps or be careful as they advance towards you. However, we did get a successful escape there, which allows us to sell all this junk and get on with purchasing some, some upgrades. I don't think we're going to find too many upgrades. Generally speaking, the only upgrade you're going to find on the Ranger class that's worthy of investment would be perhaps rings and a new bow. 
Other than that, you're spending most of your money on utility, which is your traps and your arrows. And maybe a spear once you get a few more perks to unlock. Oftentimes, you're going to get pretty lucky to find a bow of any value that's better than this green one. And unless you get a decent roll from the Goblin Merchant, which we will maybe give a chance here. As we do see a recurve bow as an option, 100G for recurve bow. That thing's a blue or purple. I mean, I've never seen a unique come from Goblin Merchant yet. But if it's a blue or purple, yeah, it's a green. That's honestly not terrible. But we have solid option already. As the one I think we're wielding has percent damage bonus. So that's unlucky. But in all seriousness, we do have field ration, which will provide us with a few... A few easy heals and meds meds aren't a huge loss as we're about to enter into goblin caves one more time all we're gonna miss out on is a couple bandages as we head back into goblin caves one more time I'm hoping to run into a centipede or something of the sort because really that is a nice little power upgrade if you can get a decent ring or pendant roll from centipede also just don't feel like I have the meds to run into the ruins map quite yet to hunt down that worm. We're gonna try this again, and we we look at this lobby, and the fear begins to set in. One by one, we start counting the rogues as they're also sharing experiences and teaching each other how to be better rogue. I think I see five at least in a nine-player. Probably another one there somewhere I didn't count. Nine total players, eight other players, five of them are rogues. And this is when it began for me. This whole fear, this fear of rogues began to sit in. Now I've experienced this on many other permadeath runs, but as a ranger, the fear begins to really grip and hold your mind. Way, way stronger for whatever reason. The fact that you know switching to your backup weapon is going to be too late. And you need to hit those shots. Hitting shots in close is probably much more difficult. And definitely more difficult than hitting at medium to long ranges. And that is right where that rogue is going to want to be. I can truly understand why some full-time rogue players have borderline lost their mind even with the success they can find with this class. It would be maddening to be constantly on edge as I am beginning to feel that little bit of fear creep in seeing those rogues in this pre-game lobby. I like the beast hunter we are and we're going to deal with this centipede which was a really awesome find to start off this next goblin caves run. Take a bit of poison damage or acid damage whatever it may be. But this arming sword is going to make quick work of this rather than having that short sword pinging him for next to no damage. One thing we do need to do need to focus on is doing one two swings rather than trying to land that final forward thrust. Once you see that poison you just walk straight forward. Way easier to manage than trying to dodge it wide. pretty impressive how fast you can swing on the ranger class. Given that I have like one agility item, I think I'm at about 8% action speed, which is pretty wild. We get a potion, a pendant, nothing too amazing, but not horrible either as I'll take whatever we can get. That two will isn't going to do a whole lot for us, but six extra HP on that pendant. Quite nice. We'll push us back up to closer to 100 HP, considering we're such low HP right now as our strength number is like 9, or maybe 10. Now we have 9 strength, and 8 action speed with that agility. If you were stacking up to like 30 or 40 agility, you have as much action speed as an adrenaline rush fighter does. And then your spear is also hitting for more damage. Playing this permadeath made me realize, why the heck am I running spear on fighter class? But I can run it on Ranger. Hmm. Tough one. It is, uh, likely the 
It's likely that you're going to do more damage with that spear on the ranger. But you might be able to survive a little bit longer in the fighter class. If, if you're capable of blocking and spacing using sprint. But that also means you need to take adrenaline rush to match the attack speed. So many variables. Ranger, spear, very, very strong. Moving into this room, and this is one of those moments where I try to be super cautious because this room, this room is a rogue, a rogue den of sorts. As much as it does favor a ranger, when you're standing on the lower level, any of these lower levels, you could be easily shanked in no time. So we need to make our way up top, which is exactly what we're going to do, deal with these bats. Sorry, not any bats, actually. Just this death skull. This little goblin, this little goblin always annoys me. But this elf, this elf is learning his trade a little bit better. And dealing with these weak-minded goblins has become quite trivial. Seeing this trap in front of us, I am not risking risking wasting a, a field ration, so we're going to go the long way around. I have successfully pathed that way before, but it's just not worth it when you have tons of time and you're not in a huge rush. One thing that I am beginning to notice, I'm on the outskirts of this zone once again, which is not where you want to be unless you're super lucky. And we get super lucky. We have a bunch of loot here in these pots, and a portal spawns. First portal of this lobby spawns right in front of us. And seeing how we saw so many rogues in the pregame lobby, I am a little bit concerned. I'm concerned because the kill feed hasn't really shown that many deaths yet, and I know for a fact there's some rogues just creeping around, like, waiting. Waiting for me, specifically. Waiting for the ranger player to walk into that zone and destroy him. So as much as it is sad to not leave with a bunch of loot, I'm also a little bit happy and relieved to be able to gear up for a runes run. This also gives us a little bit of time and a little moment where we can spectate and determine if what I thought was actually going to happen will happen. So we see a rogue down below, we see a rogue sitting in the corner right next to the extract gate. And we see another rogue and another rogue. And eventually there's so many rogues, it's hard to even keep track of them all as they sneak through this final few portals of this lobby. The only person that's not a rogue is this cleric. I'm rooting for this guy to make it out of here alive. We got a rogue and Viz waiting. We got a rogue who's not aware. And the rogues go at each other. Whiffing pile of rapier hits, but yet that damage was still enough. That rupture poison damage was still enough. Then things start to get a little bit chaotic for this poor cleric as he takes some damage, misses his judgment, which could cost him. So, so close. That rogue was literally 1 HP. I just didn't click on the details quick enough, but he was definitely 1 HP. That cost him a ton of heals. As he tries to navigate through these mobs, he's got other rogues. Literally another rogue sitting around the corner in Viz. For whatever reason, he doesn't open the portal. Goes for this bola, which is luckily only one swing, and then loots this rogue over here. He has no idea this rogue's here. Like, it's just absurd how often this happened. And how you just had no idea, no idea when there was going to be rogue around the next corner. And I'm sitting here watching this thinking, thank god I left. This guy just lunges full speed into him, gets tapped by the morning star, deals absolutely no damage, and then gets dropped by judgment. Serves him right. But yet, there's still one more rogue. Still one more rogue this guy's got to fight, and this could be a more of a real challenge considering this guy killed Cave Troll. And this guy has a stiletto, some throwing knives, and that cleric is running out of heals. He accidentally protection bubbles a dead goblin on the ground. 
However, he makes up for it, but it takes... It must be a rupture to the face, because... I hit for a lot more damage than I was expecting to see. Just trying to land... Trying to land spells, but smashing his fist into the wall. It's not help. And this is probably the worst Molotov toss I've ever seen. All my time on Dark and Darker. Not even close. I don't think this rogue realizes just how close he has his cleric. As he begins to push him a little bit further. A little bit further away from zone. Another rupture. Chunking this guy for quite a bit of help. One more throwing knife. And he is literally... He is probably in one tap range. Threw another terrible Molotov. But our cleric end boss escapes. And this rogue. This rogue escapes as well. I can almost guarantee you if I was in that situation with my ranger. This elf would not have been making it out alive. So. We don't feel too bad about skipping out on that fight. But that. That little journey of spectating what was going on after us. Left me feeling... A little bit uneasy about entering what everyone calls the rogue den of ruins. However, this elf is on a mission. He wants to find the worm. And it is his goal to bring back whatever treasure or stories he can to the elf homeland. Sharing stories of the great hunt and how he managed to escape alive. We will see if he's successful. As most of his fellowship told him, he was far too young. So his eagerness may be his demise. As we make our way through this merchant section, buying basically just a bunch of util, meds, and whatnot. That longbow is interesting, but we're already too short of gold, and I'm pretty happy with the recurve bow. We're just going to buy a bunch of a bunch of stuff that's going to help us maybe make our way through that map. Heavy leggings wouldn't be a bad option, considering we have, like, no strength. We're in the negatives for, like, strength bonus, so we're going to grab them over the loose trousers, as our agility is... Probably high enough. And other than that, it's just potions. Potions and whatnot, and we are on our way to an extremely terrifying experience that is the ruins. This is what we came here to do. This is what we'll try to accomplish. Quickly jumping into this one, we see a team of rogues on our left. We see a couple of rogues by the dummies. And that is not all. I was quite surprised how long this lobby took to fill up, and then I realized this is now the new 0 to 15 queue. Things go a little bit slower. And then, magically, two more rogues. The fear is setting in. It is basically a rogue paradise, and we are already, we're already full to the brim with rogues, and it is 11 of 18. Meaning... Potentially, there could be seven more of them. I do see a guy swinging a... It's like a warm hall down there, so... There's something, but boy oh boy. This will be an incredibly frightening journey. Jumping into this raid, we see... A little pitch darkness when we start. It's kind of a daunting thing to jump into. I'm not sure I enjoy that spawn. It really points you at a perfectly black wall. Setting you up for one is... Probably the scariest maps in this game. I love the aesthetics. I just hate rogues. Trying not to waste. I don't really want to waste too many arrows early on. 41. 41 is a lot. But if you get in a couple engagements, those start disappearing quite quickly. Hearing mobs blow us. I don't think I've ever been below the map. Kind of a new thing to me. I do appreciate people supporting some of the channels saying comments and where to find decent mobs to fight in this map. Because truthfully, I've kind of abandoned runes for a while. Until until these rogue changes come into effect. And maybe we get the big content update soon. Runes will be a little more fun for me. Just right now, it feels like, it feels like a place to just go in and toss a bunch of gear to teams of two, or go in and get shanked by a couple rogues. I've kind of avoided ruins. I did have some fun on there for a while, but it's not really, I don't know, it's not hitting it for me. I'd rather go into Hell and Crypt solo and experience that 
as there are some really exciting rooms in that dungeon. This place really lacks a focal point for me, as Worm has been kind of just forgotten about for a little while. We're slowly sneaking, sneaking towards the center of this map as we need to find our way to Worm. I don't know where that arrow went. It looked like it shot off into the sky. But, uh... Just hold for some body shots just to make sure we don't, uh, we don't miss. I don't see too many people dropping quite yet. I was hoping to see a... We just see a few more names drop off that list, meaning... There we go. We're starting to see a few now. Hoping that rogues disperse from the... from this map. Allowing us to get to... to the worm. And kill it as a ranger. It's something I've never done. I have a decent sword for it, but I feel like... I feel like a ranger would be pretty good at killing worm, because you could just back up and spam arrows into it. I don't feel like there's any... any solid range attacks on that monster. And its movement from one end to the other is so predictable and so slow. It would likely be a very easy kill for me. So we're starting to inch our way in a little further. I'm gonna grab this protection shrine, but a hidden mob gets in our way. Of course, we miss under its under its arm or something along those lines. And I am so terrified. So terrified of rogues just gonna spring from the shadows. This map is incredible. I'm tempted to put a trap down here just because I want to cover my retreat. But I feel like it's probably better served a little closer to where the action's going to be. So move it up here in case I literally need to just run away, which is something you should be doing. And then I see one. We get our first rogue spotted. We sling an arrow in his direction. It looks like he threw a throwing knife. And that has me incredibly concerned. Looks like there's two of them, perhaps. Maybe a team of... team of rogues that just started out. And that's gonna slow down my progress so freaking much. I can't... I can't go into that area. Like, I literally can't go into that area as a ranger for a good minute or two to wait out the stealth or whatever... whatever they're planning. Whatever they've climbed or jumped up, whatever corner they've decided to hide in, whatever shrub they're hiding in. It completely zone you, zones you out from that area, at least it used to. Things have changed. It is now down to 20 seconds, which is a nice change. I think a lot of people overlook just how controlling a rogue could be just being in an area. If you're a solo player, like a solo ranger, whether it be duo queue or howling crypts, or even solo goblin caves or high roller, the fact that if you spot a rogue, it changes everything about your playstyle. It's just so dominant. No other class can hold such power over an area. And not only that, like, strike fear into anyone that enters as they know at any moment could be their last. This elf ranger has got himself into a situation he was not expecting. He has quite clearly become the hunted. He is no longer the hunter. He is simply trying to survive. As we inch our way a little closer, we do want to get to that worm, something terrible. And we need to take a little bit of risk here as we inch our way, or inch our way forward. I mean, every step is excruciating. It is difficult, and you're seeing the panic. Shooting arrows into corners, tossing, touching torches just to see if someone's sitting there, not in stealth. And I really don't understand where this team of rogues went to. They engaged a little bit of PvP with me and then disappeared? I have no idea. All I know is the top right is looking a little bit more healthy, hoping that most of those people that have died have been rogues. Which is very unlikely. We begin to see the inner circle of the map, which is where we need to be to get the worm. It's just on the edge. It's just on the edge of zone right now, which is not great. Like I said, these rogues slowed us down so much. If I wanted just a death sentence, I would have ran into this area immediately and engaged in a bunch of PvP against these teams of rogues. However, we might still get a chance to go to the worm if we act quickly. 
begin moving through this map, clearing out any corner we can. And just, just looking at this lighting. This is with pretty high brightness settings. We hear a portal on the other side of this, so we've got to trap this up just in case. Just in case we need to retreat. This will still be in zone for us. And learning to retreat is definitely part of playing the Ranger class. And immediately after opening this door, we do see some teams fighting. And these little flashes of darkness moving from one shadow to the next are definitely rogue players, and they're incredibly hard to hit with a recurve bow. I need to start landing some arrows as I... I'm gonna have to fight one of these guys, or e even a couple of them if I want to make it underneath. And now they know we're there, I think that arrow... It looked like that arrow connected. But it's extremely hard to tell. We maneuver our way to the left, see the portal. I feel like we have these players in a decent spot. It looks like we landed maybe another hit if we're lucky. And then things start to become very, very difficult. That rogue's got an arrow in his hip, so we did hit him. We hear the footsteps to our right, and we get completely outmaneuvered by this rogue. And we whiff, we whiff every single one of our quick shots, which is, this is not good. This is panic situations. We need to result to melee combat. That is the last thing you want to be doing as a ranger. <sighs> Unfortunately, we die to a rogue. There is a silver lining here. As you see, he just walked through that door. And there it is. He did land on our trap, so at least I have that going for me. But, if I was better at this game, or maybe had a spear, I could have switched to melee earlier on. Using that quick shot in close, I had to try to land a hit, but he was simply sidestepping back and forth, and uh, it's difficult. It's not easy. I really pity all you Ranger players. Well, I don't anymore, but for the past week, I kind of did if you're a soul Ranger. It was terrifying. Like, absolutely terrifying. This was the most scared I've ever been playing Dark and Darker. Every little crinkle in the bushes or mob that would appear... It terrified me. It could have been a rogue ending this permadeath entirely. I've had under other permadeaths and other characters have the same fate. But you just feel a little bit safer as most classes I play are melee. And that's where all your damage is anyway. On a ranger, your damage is landing headshots. And that is not always easy if you're not well practiced on the bow. So unfortunately, this elf ranger's journey is over. And that beast hunter is laid to rest in the ruins. Like many other young adventurers seeking fame or fortune, their story ends there. I really wish I could make it, like, even level 5. Love to get to level 5, do a couple Howling Crips runs. But this past couple weeks has been a serious struggle for any solo player that's not playing Rogue. So I wish you all the best of luck with the new content. I'm super excited, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Cheers.